Hello Screamers, Lewis here from Fright Tour. I'm back with our third review of the season and this time I find myself two and a half hours away from home reviewing a haunted attraction that I have been to a total of three or four times. I can't remember. It is an attraction that has won uh, three awards from us. Uh, it has won Best Haunted Hayride. It won our Best Haunted House twice for two of its different attractions. I am talking about a haunted attraction located in a town called Mountville, Pennsylvania, which is just about 20 minutes from a town that you have probably heard of called Lancaster. Uh, yes, that is a town where you can get amazing Amish butter, but I was not there for the Amish butter. I was there for a juggernaut of a haunt, a haunt that I love oh, oh so much. Back from my first experience there many, many years ago, the attractions are detailed, they are dark, they are scary, they are creepy. They have exquisite theming, exquisite layout. The actors are always on point. So I could not wait to jump into this head first, to scream, to enjoy my night. I am talking about a haunt that we have on our top 13 list. It is the haunt called Field of Screams. But you know what time it is. Before I can get to that nitty gritty review that you've been so eagerly waiting, it is time for you guys, if you already haven't done so, to hit that subscribe button and of course ring that bell. When you ring that bell, you will be notified every single time that I come out with a screaming full review. You will be notified via email, a notification on your phone, a notification via YouTube that I have released a review of a haunted attraction in your area. If you live from West Virginia or Virginia all the way up to Maine, it is time for you to click subscribe and ring that bell. Get your friends, get your family. It's time for you all to start liking my channel and follow me because I will tell you where to go, where the best place is to spend that buck, the best scream for your buck. I am talking about the best and scariest haunted attractions in the Northeast year after year. I do not sugarcoat it. I tell you the truth. If I do not like it, I will say I do not like it. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe and ring that bell. This outdoor attraction boasts four different attractions, including the Den of Darkness, Frightmare Asylum, Nocturnal Wasteland, and of course, the Haunted Hayride. When I went many, many years ago, this attraction immediately became one of my favorites. Like I said earlier, it's just got such amazing attention to detail, such great theming. The attractions are beautiful to examine and look at. So I couldn't wait. I grabbed my ticket from Christine at the ticket booth. I immediately began my night because the night was getting crowded. It looked like it was starting to fill up rather fast. The lines were getting rather long. I went on a Sunday night. So without any further ado, I began my night with Frightmare Asylum. Scratch that. I am not going to sit here and go haunt by haunt because if I do that, we will be sitting here for 45 minutes and who wants to listen to me ramble for 45 minutes because I know I don't. So I'm going to go uh, over this in like a general theme, give you an idea of each haunted house in well, like maybe one or two sentences, give you my pros, my cons, and then give you an overall general feeling of what I thought about Field of Screams for 2022. So again, I began my night with Frightmare Asylum, followed that up with Den of Darkness, then followed that up with Nocturnal Wasteland and finished the night with the Haunted Hayride. Now you guys know me. Haunted Hayrides are more entertaining than scary. Uh, this Hayride has won the coveted Haunted Hayride of the Year award. I don't remember the year. And two of the attractions, Den of Darkness and the Frightmare Asylum, have also won the Haunted House of the Year award. Again, don't remember the year. But I knew what I was getting into. I knew that Field of Screams is a very intricate, immersive, detailed, in-your-face, intense attraction. I know what Jim and his crew at Field of Screams have to offer, so I was eager and ready to begin. The night was starting to get dark. It was starting to get crowded, so I hopped in line for Frightmare Asylum, and I have to say, I love the entire uh, system that they have for letting groups in. I think it could be a little bit longer. I think it was a little too short. Um, but they have this where you get in a group of, like, you know, 
three or four or five lines and you have a green and red light, pretty much like at a water park when you're sliding down a ride and the green light turns on and then your group is told to go. You wait until, you know, with the red light and then your green light goes, then you go inside. So I found that really cool. All four attractions, excluding the hayride, well, and then it wouldn't be all four attractions, it was only three. <laughs> all three only had that. So Nocturnal Wasteland, Den of Darkness, and Frightmare Asylum pretty much were uh, controlled by a timed system where uh, I guess the group in front of you passed a proxy server, which would essentially turn on the green light for the next group to enter. Again, I would maybe space that out a little bit longer because the entire night, it felt rushed. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's maybe because I've been there so many times. I mean, I've been there three times, but I've also been to other attractions three or four times, and I didn't... I don't want to, I felt numb. Does that make sense? I felt kind of like immune to everything that was taking place around me. I felt like the grouping, the amount of space in between each groups was rather quick. Um, the attention to detail inside, the props, the sets, they're very, very close to you. So you can take a lot in. And then the actors, you, you also have to factor them in because they're what you're there for, popping out, executing scenes, touching you. And let's talk about the touching factor really quick. Touching can work really effectively if it's done the right way, okay? And I'm sorry, but that night at Field of Screams, I felt like majority of the people, the actors, were just touching you to touch you. Like grabbing your shoulder and like rubbing you and like saying, come this way or follow me boy and blah, blah, blah. Doesn't really do anything. You know, maybe hide under a table, reach out, grab my ankle or hide behind a wall with a hole in it and grab out and reach my shoulder. Something along those lines. There wasn't any kind of like um, unknown with it. You knew the actors were there and that they were going to touch you. So the touch aspect kind of lost its punch. In addition to that, the music. The music outside is fine. You don't hear it inside the haunt itself. You know, they have a live band, they have dancers, they have loud music outside, that's fine. But inside, it's like the Haunted Attraction had a soundtrack. Now, for me, I don't know, but I don't go to a Haunted Attraction to essentially listen to heavy metal rock music. It might work in some scenarios, depending on the theme of the attraction. But for these style attractions, both Den of Darkness and Frightmare Asylum, which are decrepit, old, haunted houses, it just didn't seem a fit. It kind of took away from the overall ambiance of the attractions where I was like, what is the point in this loud, obnoxious rock music? All right, it's cool. So number one, there's no silence inside whatsoever. And silence can be a great factor in a haunted attraction because you hear your own breath. You can hear things happening, you know, ahead of you, behind you that can scare you. You couldn't hear anything the actors were saying. You couldn't hear anything that they were banging on. So all of the scares became ineffective. And I have to say, about maybe halfway into my night, I thought, okay, Lewis, you're being really over critiquing here. But believe it or not, both groups that I went through, I went through Frightmare Asylum with one group, and then I went through with Den of Darkness. No one was really screaming. So I kind of got the idea that maybe what I'm experiencing is exactly what everyone else is experiencing, and I could be wrong. It could have been an off night. You know, I could be completely over critiquing it. Again, it's my opinion of my experience from that night, but it just fell off. And I don't know why. I felt completely overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that I was seeing in both Frightmare Asylum and Den of Darkness. I felt that the music was really unneeded. The actors were not using any kind of dark spaces or corners. They were pretty much out in the open where you could see them and then they would just kind of touch you or you know, grab your shoulder and that doesn't really do anything for you. Plus you couldn't hear them, whatever they were saying to you or screaming at you or banging on. So with all of that, it just overwhelmed me to the point where I became completely numb to everything that went down in both of these haunted houses to where I think I maybe only got startled once or twice. And that's not normal for a place like Field of Screams. Field of Screams is top notch in my opinion. It's one of the top attractions in our 13 top haunted attractions list. So I was kind of shocked when I came out and I said, all right, something's got to be going on. So I wasted no more time. I went right to Nocturnal Wasteland, which is their outdoor attraction. It's one of the newer attractions. I forget what year it essentially came out, but Frightmare Asylum, Den of Darkness, and Hayride 
were the three there and Nocturnal Wasteland was the fourth to be added. And I always loved this attraction because it's beautiful. The lighting, the scenery, the layout, a lot has changed with this attraction, I believe. Don't quote me because I don't remember. But Nocturnal Wasteland, when I visited it many years ago, was not one of my favorites. It was new. I felt like they really needed to kind of build on it and make it better. So when we started walking through, it's a menagerie of trash. That's pretty much what it is. It's got, you know, catwalks, old buses, old vans, old cars. It's got pumpkin patches. It's got a Tesla coil. It's got all different kinds of stuff in it. Basically, it is a waste land where the nocturnal creatures of the night come out to scare the crap out of you. Where were the creatures? Now, I don't know if this is fair, me to, for, for, fair for me to say, but... I think maybe the pandemic and the current state where no one wants to work right now has really put a damper on things for haunted attractions because this entire walk, which it is a very long walk, we encountered 11 actors. There were times where we walked a major stretch of the attraction with nothing taking place other than taking in the beauty of the attraction because it is a gorgeous attraction. So Nocturnal Wasteland... Uh, it again fell short for me. I I, I, uh, I blame it on the lack of actors and maybe there were more and I just didn't see them or their timing was off. But my group was wandering for a very long time, especially in the beginning. I actually started counting the amount of actors that were in it. Um, it just kind of really fell short, which is a shame because again, I know what Field of Screams is fully capable of. And I hope that it's not the pandemic and that this isn't a new trend because we're going to have to go back to animatronic scaring people. That ain't going to work for me. I'll have to close down Fright Tour. I won't be able to go to haunted houses anymore. It's going to be boring. So leaving Nocturnal Wasteland, I found a fellow reviewer, well, ex-reviewer. He used to do escape rooms. Um, his website is Escape Authority. Um, we kind of chat a little bit about everything that we experienced that night, about where we've been and, you know, went over our websites and our feelings on things and, you know, kind of had a little powwow. And then it was time for the Haunted Hayride. Now, you guys know me. I'm going to say it again. The Haunted Hayride is uh, always more entertaining than scary for me. I find them just a lot of fun to do. The, you know, ultimate thing to do during Halloween is a Haunted Hayride. So I don't go into them really thinking too much. Now, this Hayride, of course, did win our coveted uh, Haunted Hayride of the Year award many years ago. So I know that it is a good Hayride. And still, yes, this Hayride is so much fun. They take you from scene to scene with um, these gigantic warehouse-style buildings where on both sides of the Hayride, front and back, these doors close down and a scene of it's total scariness happens on the inside. It's effective. It's great. I've never seen wagons uh, move like I've seen. And by move, I mean the people on them. You have people that duck and lay down. It gets a little out of hand sometimes when you have someone who is overreacting and doing it just for show, like the guy next to me who basically pretty much ended up on my lap. But whatever, I won't put that in the review. Anyway, um, you know, the hayride is just a great time. It's fun. It's it's uh, it's a good hayride. It, it really is. It's, you know, knocks everything out of the park with the scenes it has. It was a little actor skimby there, you know, towards the middle. There was one part where nothing absolutely happened with any actors and everyone was like, well, what's going on? Why are we stuck in this room and nothing's happening? So again, I really hope that the pandemic hasn't ruined haunted attractions in that style that we're going to have to go back to animatronic props because like I said, I'm going to have to close down the tour and not do this anymore. But overall, Field of Screams for me tonight, I don't know what happened. I have no idea. I am at a total loss for words. Actually, I'm not. I mean, I just sat here for pretty much 10 minutes and just blabbed my entire experience to you over and over again about what I thought of the place and uh, it's upsetting because I I I do this for not a living I do this for fun I do this because I enjoy letting you guys know where the best places are and ultimately because I love haunted houses and I love Halloween so when I go to a place that I know is capable of being just so in your face and so intense and so downright scary because it has been in the past. And then my experience is anything but. It pains me because it's, I, I don't know what happened. I honestly really don't know. Again, could it be the lack of actors? Could it be the fact that 
certain execution things inside the haunted attractions themselves are just contributing to the reason that I did not find anything creepy or scary. Very well could be. I could be completely wrong. The night that I could have went on could have been just a totally off night. The experience that you guys have could be completely different. And that has happened on some of my reviews. You guys have chimed in on the comments to where you've experienced something totally different. So by all means, if you have been to Field of Screams this year, put your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of the place, your experience. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me, let's talk it out. Let's have a little powwow session about it. But for me this year, Field of Screams definitely felt short. And I don't know why that was. I don't know what contributed to it. I think I have my finger on it, but I'm not entirely sure. I need some help, guys. You guys got to help me out and let me know. All right. So post in the comments what you thought of this place if you've been there. I definitely want to hear your thoughts. So it is time for me to dish out the official fright rating for Field of Screams, and I'm going to keep it the same. Right now, it currently holds a three skulls out of five, and we're going to continue that. We're going to give it a three skulls out of five. I am simply updating the written review that I have on my website to a video review. I think it's time. There's actually a few places on our tour this year that I will be doing that. Uh, again, because of that server wipe where I originally lost a whole bunch of reviews that I originally had from many years ago. So Lewis, you know, you look at my website and you're like, well, wait a minute, you've never been there, but yet you have a fright rating. Oh, I've been there. I have a fright rating for the place, but yeah. I lost it, okay? Silly old me did not back up my written reviews and I lost everything. So now I need to update them to video views. But guess what? You get to see me more. Yeah. So, guys, it's been fun. It's been uh, a pleasure to talk to you. It's been amazing. I'm about to begin a three-day journey in Baltimore. I am visiting our 2021 Fright of the Year, the Nevermore Haunt. Yes, I am excited. I cannot wait to get back there. We will be taking on two new haunts, including Hackney Haunts and Field of Screams, Maryland. I know, ironic, huh? Um, but I cannot wait. So yes, be on the lookout, ring that bell, subscribe to my channel, visit our website, frighttour.com, like me on Facebook, show your friends and family, blast it all over wherever you can, get us out there. I want everyone to know a fright tour and how we dish out the best and honest reviews of haunted attractions from Maine all the way down to the Virginias. Well, we actually haven't been to Virginia yet, but we'll be going there soon. But until next time, guys, happy screaming.